Welcome back guys. I'm Margaret, your Code Wizards HQ instructor. Today we're going to be talking about Python loops. So what are loops? Loops are kind of like they sound. A loop is a block of code that runs over and over in a circle. And there are two types of loops that we're going to talk about today, the for loop and the while loop. Loops are really important to programmers so that they don't have to keep writing the same code over and over again. It also helps them prevent mistakes and those pesky bugs that we're always trying to get rid of. In the last video, we talked about lists and we used a list to group some data together and then we accessed the information in the list using an index number. So that code looked like this on the left, right? We had our foods list and then we said print food list zero, one, two, right? So we'd print each of those items inside of that list. Now we could each add, add each item, right? Using the index number, but what if there were a hundred items? We'd have to write this out at least a hundred times, right? That would be a lot of code. Instead of going through all that code, we're going to use a for loop to go through each item in the list automatically for us. And the for loop looks like this. So it says for food in foods list, and this food variable stands for each item in the list. So for the first item in the list, we're going to print I like and whatever that food is. So tacos, I like tacos. Now we're gonna go again through the list and for the second item in the list, food is gonna be pizza. So it's gonna say, I like pizza. Then we're gonna go through the list again and then we have nachos, so I like nachos. Once all the items in this list are done, we're not going to print anything else. So the for loop will end at that point. So the for loop lets you iterate through every item in the list the body of the for loop runs once for every item in that list, right? So each item that we had here, we did this action, which was print, I like food. Another loop that we can use to get the information in this list is called a while loop. All right, the while loop has three different parts. First, we have this counter that we have to initialize, and this tells our while loop where to start. The next step is how many times do we wanna repeat this code? We're gonna say while counter is less than 100 colon, right? So when this counter number is no longer less than 100, we're gonna stop going through the loop. But while it's less than 100, we're gonna to continue to do the actions inside of the loop. All right, and then this third part is gonna be increasing the counter. So every time we go through the loop, we're gonna increase the counter by one. So right now, counter equals zero, so while counter is less than 100, so the question is, is zero less than 100? Yes, right? So the, the while loop is gonna go, and then it's gonna increase the counter to one. So next time we do the loop, counter is gonna be one. So is counter is one less than 100? Yes, right? So it's gonna do the actions. So all the way until counter gets to 100. So if counter is 100, is counter less than 100? No, right? So that means the loop is no longer going to continue doing its action. It's going to stop because counter is no longer less than 100. And this is called a condition. All right. So while this condition is true, we're going to run the code. If it's not true, no more while loop. Now let's give this a try. Let's try writing our own loops. Okay. We're going to print every number from zero to six, and we're going to do that two different ways. We're going to try it in our for loop and once in our while loop. Go ahead and hop on over to your editor now, whichever text editor is your favorite. I'm gonna be using the Code Wizards HQ editor. You can ignore these two lines of code I have at the top. That's just some special libraries that we're using for our editor. So let's go ahead and first we wanna use a for loop to print the numbers between zero and six. So in order to do that, we need to start with a list of the numbers from zero to six. So let's say numbers equals and inside of our brackets, we're going to say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. No comma after that because that's the last uh, item in our list. Okay, now our for loop. We could use our index to find and print out each one of these, right? But instead of doing that, we're going to try our loop that's going to help us out and make our code a little bit neater and less so we don't make as many mistakes. So we're going to say for num in numbers. So num stands for each iteration that we're going to go through each one of these items in numbers. All right. So for num in numbers, and then do our colon at the end. Inside of our for loop, we also want to have those four spaces at the beginning. So for num in numbers, we're going to say 
print num. And remember that num, this variable here, represents each item inside our list. So there's our for loop. Let's go ahead and save that. And let's see what that looks like. Now we see that our for loop has printed from zero to six, all of the numbers inside of our list, right? Very cool. We didn't have to go through and say number zero, number one, number two, so on and so forth, right? That would have been a lot more code. Instead, we used our for loop and we really only had to do two lines right there. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but with a while loop. All right? And remember our while loop has those three parts. So first let's do a counter starting with our first number. So we're gonna say, number equals zero. So we have a variable called number and that's starting at zero. Now our while loop, we're going to say while number is less than seven and then put our colon at the end. Because what do we want to print? We want to print between zero and six, right? So all of those numbers are less than seven. And once it gets to seven, our while loop is going to stop because seven is not less than seven, right? So while number is less than seven, inside of our while loop, let's use those four spaces at the beginning. We're going to print our number. So each time it goes through the loop, it's going to print out the number variable. And then the last thing that we need to do is increase number by one every time we go through our loop. So number equals number plus one. And we wanna print out that number variable before we increase the number one. So when it's at zero, we're gonna print that, and then we're gonna make it one, and then we're gonna print that, then we're gonna make it two, so on and so forth. So let's give a save and let's see if our while loop works. Ta-da, so mine's working, hopefully yours is too. If not, double check you've got all these different things in the right spot and that you've got your number variable and that everything else matches. Here are the solutions, you've got your for loop and your while loop. So hopefully you guys got those all correct and your loops are working great. That was our lesson on loops and the final lesson in our Python mini course. Thank you guys so much for watching and joining along. If you want more Python lessons, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You can also join our year round kids coding classes for kids ages eight to 18 at codewizardshq.com. So now that you're familiar with Python, keep practicing, keep going, keep up the great work, and we'll see you next time.